This is Ferret from Fredo Fighting, proudly sponsored by Empire Fight Store. Today I'm very lucky, joined by a duo from Love Boxing TV, John and Kaya. Kaya, we'll start with you. How have you been, mate? Good, mate. Good, good, good. Just doing uh, attempting dry Jan. I, fa I fail miserably pretty much every year. I, I, I normally make it through the first week and um, I fail. But this year I'm determined. I'll have a little bit of a detox. and uh, But there's no boxing to enjoy, really. The COVID's ruined most of that. And uh, yeah, mate, listen, I'm trying to train, get healthy. And uh, yeah, big, big year of boxing ahead of us, mate. It's dry Jan when you don't drink, basically. Yeah, when you don't drink any alcohol. You don't really drink, Fred, no? No, I haven't drunk for 17 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I overindulged uh, during Christmas, so I've got to really sort it out. And plus, you know, we're on camera quite a lot now, so I don't want to get that Kel Brook fat face when he puts weight on, you know? So I just want to keep... Keep the chubbiness off if I can. Yeah, go after you. That's why you're sitting extra. so far away. That's true. That's why you are sitting so far mm -hmm. away from the camera, kind of like that, aren't you? Rather than close. Well, yeah, I mean, I could, I could get a bit closer, and I just want John's head to look bigger than mine, so I'll, I'll go a little <laughs> bit further back. All right, that makes sense. So, John, how have you been, mate? How's your Christmas? Yeah, same, same. We 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 discovered well, I, I discovered this wine called Jam Shed. This uh, this this red wine. I don't even like wine, but uh, it's so nice. If anyone out there drinks have a taste of this it's amazing oh I, I wasn't a big drinker for about a year or two and then i started drinking this and then yeah overindulged over christmas i'm dry january as well and uh yeah just looking forward to the new year the boxing doing our channels just uh it's like a therapy doing this coming on this show and doing our own show just a uh, nice distraction away from the kids and the rat race and the madness so uh yeah all good all positive Do you know what i will add to that fred sorry yeah. i will add to that this, this wine, right, it's about six quid a bottle. So there's probably going to be some people watching it that are going, oh, that's, that's shit. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I spend like 40 quid a bottle on wine. We just go down to local Tesco's with a club card and uh, buy this jam shit. It's, it's, yeah. it's pretty, yeah. pretty, it's seven, uh, wait, pretty it's Moorish. Seven pound, it's £7.50, pound but if you've got your Tesco's club card, you get it for six pounds. But uh, yeah, to a we wine know. connoisseur, they'll probably spit it out. But uh, to us, yeah. <laughs> it tastes all right. Wait, so how many bottles of this wine did you buy then over Christmas? Both of you combined. Oh, I had about 10 bottles in the house. I ain't got none. John there. was no drinking that more than water, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, yeah. that replaced water in your house, didn't it? Big time. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. So for, for your Christmas, then you're both you are both each being in yourself a bottle of that, that wine, basically. Yeah, yeah, well, what no, it I is, so. Fred, is the whole Tyson Fury Dillian White negotiations. Like I start off in the morning, I say I'm not gonna have any wine today, then I pick up you know, Twitter, and then I'm like, oh, can't take this anymore. And I just get the wine out just to Start get hitting myself the through these negotiations. So you're blaming on Dillian White and Tyson Fury then, basically? Basically, yeah. Yeah. And what you said earlier, you said kind of get out of the rat race. What do you mean get out of the rat race? Do you mean like the nine to five shifts? Just, yeah, just yeah, working, the, the mate. Kids, kids are going back to school and just, yeah, my house is just chaos, basically, until the kids go to sleep. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's just a nice distraction. So you get about two hours in the evening, so basically. Yeah, exactly. A bit far exactly. away. There we go. Look. look exactly. I feel like I've uh, I feel like I've joined the party a little bit. Do you know yeah, what I feel like now? I feel like you two, oh. you two are at the bar, and I was standing in the back of the pub just on my own, all lonely, and you two are having a nice chat. And now, now I feel like I'm I'm part of it now. So oh, that's yeah, quite good. Your cheeks look massive. Cheers, <laughs> 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 buddy. <laughs> Well, I haven't, I haven't heard that analogy before, but that's definitely one for the book. So we'll start off with uh, Dillian White and Tyson Fury, as you just mentioned earlier, John. I'm going to be speaking to Xavier Miller next week, hopefully, so I can ask him about it then. But what's kind nice. of of it then? We'll start with you, uh, Kaya. What's going on with that? I think the fight happens, Fred. I think the fight's happening. There's a lot of sceptics out there that think, you know, that the arbitration is going to continue on past March or the WBC could potentially extend the purse bid date and purse bids in six days. So I, I can't see it. I think we're, I think we're getting this fight <clears throat> and I do believe that it will go to purse bids. And I've got a funny feeling the zone are going to put in a huge offer because it's a monster fight. You know, there's no one better at promoting a fight than Tyson Fury out there. And um, I think they're going to, they're, they're really going to overpay the zone. So the 20% that everyone's moaning about, I don't think it's going to be as bad as people think. I think there's some discussions behind the scenes with Dillian White, Eddie Hearn, I think Eddie Hearn's going, look, just, if this goes to purse bids, don't worry, I've got you sorted. 
Um, so that's why you're not hearing much from Team White at the moment or Eddie Hearn. You know, um, I think it happens. I really do. I can't wait for it. And I, I think it happens March, April, around about the time we're going to get AJ Usyk. Do you think that'll be the first time that Eddie Hearn will meet Frank Warren in person then at the press conference? <laughs> uh, John, sorry. Possible. <sighs> If he does, if he does, I mean, if for me, if if Dillian White gets twenty percent, I wouldn't do any press. I just think it's unfair. Personally, I think that he should get thirty percent. I think Dillian White brings a hell of a lot to the table. I think that over here, stadium fight. I think he could do a million pay per view buys. That's what I think. I think Eddie Hearn, Frank Warren, that whole rhetoric, all the viral videos going from that. Dillian White, maybe a table gets flipped with Tyson Fury. Baby Ting and Shane Fury, John Fury. It could be a mega, mega fight. And I think Dillian White plays his part in it. And to you know think that he gets 20% out of it, I think it's laughable. As you say, you look at Anthony Joshua, Pulev, um, Usyk, they're, they're like getting 30, 35% when they fight Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua is a bigger star than Fury. So I just think it's laughable, really. But, you know, the good people at the WBC never cease to amaze us. So... I don't know. I think that it's going to probably go to arbitration. That's my fault. I don't think that um, the zone are going to come in with this this bid uh, because I just think they'll have to pay too much to give Dillian White what he he deserves. If it's going to be 20%, they'll have to pay way too much to get this fight. So I think that Dillian White, they might just bite their nose off to spite their face and wait till March for the arbitration. But then if they do... I think <laughs> he's holding on to it because he knows I've got something to say. You're holding on if to they, it. Yeah, you know, if they you know I'm gonna if, butt in. Well, go on, but go on. Because he usually I'm, never I'm, lets I'm, this is why I tell you to shush all the time because you keep interrupting <laughs> me. Go on. I've got a funny feeling the zone will win the purse bid. John may be right, they're not gonna pay as much as maybe I'm saying. This will be the zone's first pay-per-view event of 2022. That's what will happen. And that's how they give Dillian White enough money to make sure that the 20% doesn't mean as much as everyone's harping on about, like yourself, John. He's being shafted, he's being shafted. We don't know what's, you know what figures are being touted behind the scenes. How do we know he's getting shafted? He's shafted by Maurizio, but we don't know what, what you know proposals are on the table. So how can you know he's even being shafted? He could make his career high payday and get a shot at the title. So I think yeah, it's the fact that it's twenty percent is so low compared to what it should be. I think it's only like 45, 55 when it's a man when you're a mandatory or number one the WBC and they put it up to twenty percent for what reason I don't know. But yeah, it's they bit- don't like Dillian White. The WBC don't like Dillian White. They never give him a shot against Wilder. So if he didn't, you know, get his lawyers involved, who's to say that he wouldn't even got his mandatory position anyway? Um, and I think, as you say, it says on the WBC, uh, uh, mandate interim WBC champion gets 45%, or if it's a challenger, they get 30%. It doesn't even say anything about 20%. So they've plucked out 20%, but was that his purse bid that he um, put in when he fought um, Povetkin in, in Gibraltar? I don't know. But the thing is, is it's sort of checkmate for, for Team Fury, Bob Arum. It's sort of checkmate because what they'll do is they'll say to uh, uh, Eddie Hearn, Dillian White, if you don't take 20%, you're going to wait until this goes to arbitration in March. Even if they win the arbitration in March, right? And then they say, oh, this is unfair. It should be 30%. Even if they win, by that time, Anthony Joshua may have, you know, be closer to fighting Usyk. So then they might just say, well, okay, you've won that. But now a month later, Joshua Usyk fight. Maybe then Tyson Fury just has a unification, which trumps fighting your mandatory. So then... Dillian White's just waited all the way to the end of March. For what? He doesn't even get to fight Tyson Fury anyway. Tyson Fury takes his WBC belt with him off to have an undisputed fight with either Usyk or Anthony Joshua. So, who knows? Who knows? That's why, it's hindsight, just... that's why hindsight is so good. I mean, when you look back at this in 2023, you'll think, oh, blimey. How, um, how many things could have happened? How many things end up did happening? So, just moving on from the kind of Dillian White situation, you, message a, you mentioned AJ there. He's out training to buy and pictures emerged today and yesterday, I think by Michael Benson or someone on someone's story of him kind of training alongside Floyd Mayerbell as he Floyd giving a few tips. Do you read into that at all or do you think that's just a, a nice little story on Instagram? Uh, Kyle, we'll start with you. Um, yeah, I think he's out there anyway because he's uh, discussing a potential fight with a YouTuber, right? Floyd, money kicks, I don't know. You, 
I don't know who he is. Do you know who he is, Fred? Because I ain't got he's a clue. He's really, he's is. very, very, I think he's one of the richest kids in the world. I think mean, he's an adult now, but he's very, very rich. And so Floyd's yeah. going to go in there and fight a, basically a kid, right, for loads of money. So that's why he's out there. So I'm not reading too much into it. I think you can take a lot from Floyd. Floyd can stand in front of you and you can be right next to him and not land once. So if he can nick a little bit of that off of Floyd, I, I don't expect to see Floyd in his corner or anything like that. I think they're good friends. I think Floyd potentially might try and schmooze his way in there, but I can't see it happening. I've said it to John before. I think AJ's already made a decision on who the trainer is. Just don't think he's told us. I think he's just out there for the hot climate. He's got Coley with him. I think we're all reading a bit too much into, you know, Ant Anthony Wilson or, you know, um, all the other stuff as well. And also, I said as well in our stream, there's too many cameras about. I don't know if AJ's allowing that on purpose or whether... I don't, I don't you know, think there's too many cameras from... about. I think, I think there's an Instagram story once every two weeks, so that's it. And that's not even his Instagram story. It's someone else tagging. Right. I think it's all right. I don't think... But if he's sparring, though, no, Fred, if he, he's in there sparring with a Coley and he's... Mind you, it's not his gym, so he probably doesn't have a say who's in there or not. But Anthony Joshua is a big enough star to not give away, mind you, the game plan's pretty obvious, but to not have, you know, him sparring with, you know, another world champion and people just filming it. So I don't know if there's some sort of something going on underneath there. God knows. We'll see. Do you see, do you see him staying with Robert Kraken, John, or do you think he's moved on? Oh, I, this I, We just did a stream and I was saying, I just think that how on earth he hasn't got a trainer locked down by now, if he's meant to be fighting... April, I just, I just don't get it. I think he should be locked down. There should be one trainer. There should be one voice. And um, it's still a bit confusing to me. Kaya seems to think he's got a magic little trainer in his cupboard that he's not revealed to anyone yet. And nobody knows about it, which I just totally disagree with. So I don't know. I just think he needs to get one trainer locked down. Maybe it is Rob McCracken. Maybe like that's the guy. But I think he needs to clear out the rest of the guys and just have one voice in that corner. And it is alarming to me, though, that they got the tactics so wrong uh, against Usyk. It just, I just still baffled by it now that they just did not put their foot down at one point in that fight towards the end. The instructions from the corner, they just, I just thought they was all wrong. Who, what do I know? Hey, what do I know? But that's what it seemed no, to true. me. So, um, yeah, no, you're right. I don't mate. know. It, the ta tactics were terrible. Um, Rob McCacken didn't have a great night that night. Um, at no point, even when he was heavily down on the scorecards, did they tell him to put his foot on the gas and try to at least hold, hold on to his belts so the last four rounds, championship rounds. If anything, Usyk looked like he was going to knock him out. I just feel like the nervous energy that was spent in the first half of the fight, the fact that Usyk just stuck it on him and, you know, the, the distance you, you control know? was terrible. Everything was terrible. It was, it, was a, it was a poor, poor performance and he cannot fight that badly again. If he improves, uh, and he will do in, a sec in, the, in the rematch, and you're seeing the similar sort of tactics in, in terms of, you know, just break the distance, get close and just rough him up a little bit. The fight's going to be the, in the UK. So I'm assuming we're going to get a, a British ref as well. Just just try and break the distance. But, you know, you're talking about a master master um, tactician and Usyk there. So that's, not, that's going to be easier said than done. But, yeah, I'm still going for uh, Joshua, though, in the rematch. You, you were just going to say something there, John, while Kyle was talking. What were you going to say? Um, I can't remember. I, just, I think I was going to say, I, I would like Anthony Joshua to go with Shane McGuigan. I don't think it's going to happen. But just seeing a video earlier of him training with a Coley just made me think, like, Shane McGuigan would, for me, be a great fit. I just feel he's so certain, Shane McGuigan. It's like, like it's his way or the highway. And I feel like... He's calculated. He's I think that's a perfect word to describe Shane McGuigan as calculated, I think, isn't he? Very, yeah, the, no mm. stone is un unturned, and I feel that he's also he, not, he doesn't just you know give you know strategy and tactics to a fighter, it's also like emotionally, it's like, yes, you are doing the right fit. It's like he, he, he needs that from me, and I feel like at the moment with Rob McCracken, even in the fight against Andy Ruiz, I felt like in the court corner, it was like double questioning himself and talking to Rob McCracken. It's like a funny relationship I, I, I see there, and I feel that I don't know, he needs some emotional strength as much as he does with the strategy and I think Shane McGuigan would be a great fit and then imagine having a sparring with a Coley and Dubois and yeah I think I've never thought of it before I thought no how could he go there I think we've done a video on it once didn't we Kaya but mm. yeah I think that would be a good fit but yeah if you, um, you, I, 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 just to add to that as well yeah go on Kaya so just quickly to add to that I won't take long 
Shane McGuigan's all about being economical as well. He doesn't waste much in the ring. You know what I mean? He, he does, his fighters are very economical. And that's what Anthony Joshua needs to be in this fight. He needs to be aggressive in the right times. He needs to reserve energy in the right times. Because if he does that, I think that the general consensus is that he has to fight on the inside to win this fight. I don't agree with that. I think he, he, he won some rounds in the middle rounds in the first fight from the outside. He landed some real heavy shots. There was just never a follow-on from... It was all single shots. If he can start putting twos and threes together, I would shame McGuigan... It's really good at, uh, you know, look what, look what he's done to Lawrence Acoli. Lawrence Acoli was just was all over the place. He's really turned him into sort of a sniper, so to speak. And I think that's what AJ's got to be in this fight. And also Shane McGuigan's young, fit and healthy. So they can all go running together. You can build that bond outside of, uh, you know, the confines of the gym. So I think that, that matters as well, you know. I think yeah, it's, a, that, it's a great fit. Do you find that when you do it in videos on Annie Joshua, do you find they do better views? Yeah. Yeah, any yeah. anything. That's the thing with AJ, what he's up against, and that like so, where he's out in these training camps and that, like these guys in the background, they can't wait to get him in the video because they know, like you know, oh look, I'm training with my boy. I think that Anthony Wilson, he was doing that. It was a video on his Instagram account, and you sort of got to feel sorry for AJ a little bit because everyone knows that the rub off of Anthony Joshua, you're going to get big views, you're going to get um, your name's going to be uh, put up there more. So, yeah, we do. We do videos and then we do, yeah, do good views when we do. Mm, certainly. I don't need too much of time. We're going for a, for a bit anyway, but 2022 has just started. What are you kind of plans for this year in the channel? Are you switch anything up or do you go on the same, same type of content or start a view, Kyle? Yeah, you know, I don't think we're going to do anything majorly different. You know, we're just going to keep doing what we're doing. We have streamlined a couple of things here or there. Um, you'll see that anyway coming up in, in the near future, just to give us a bit bit of extra time. We did go a bit health for lever and burnt out a little bit back in the last year. So trying to avoid that. But yeah, just all systems go, mate. Massive fights ahead of us this year. Hopefully we get a few surprise ones as well. Interesting to see. I think Conor Ben uh, will be at the end of his firefight deal. I think he'll have a couple of fights. I'm really interested to see who that fifth fight is going to be against. I've just got a funny feeling it's going to be Avenician. I think we're going to get Conor Ben and Avenician this year. At the back really, of the you think year. so? The I really think that's going to happen because I think it's too much noise for it. Conor Ben's a very proud man. And um, I think at the end of that deal, they're going to roll the dice. And I think it might be Avenician. Depends on what Avenician does in his next fight. Apparently, he's not fighting Ortiz now because Mike, Michael Mickinson's fighting Ortiz. So, but I'd love to see that fight. Maybe I'm just coming from a place where that's probably my dream fight of uh, 2022 from a British standpoint. What about, who are your kind of standout fighters for 2022? Who do you think is going to have a, a very good year? It doesn't have to be a champion, it can be a prospect. You put Stevenson, Jaron Ennis, anyone. Who are you, John? Who do you think is going to be sending standout, yeah. sending standout stars? Well, saying that, like Jaron Ennis, like surely he's got to put his foot down this year. Say, mm. um, Errol Spence, Crawford, are they going to get that fight together? But they're, they're getting old now. So, yeah, I mean, the world weight division, these guys, Conor Ben, Virgil Ortiz, Jaron Ennis, it's time for them to step up. But, you know, what fights... Are, is Sean Porter, he's retired now. So, like, what sort of fights are they going to have, like, that breakout fight? Because if they don't, they've all got to fight each other. And, say, Avenis is, is there, is, is floating around as well. But, um, do you know what, I'm... You know what I want to see happen, right? I want to see the middleweight division sort itself out. Because at the moment, you've got Triple G just holding up that IBF belt. Um, he was going to fight Murata, but that didn't happen. Then you've got Andrade, bless him. He just can't get a fight, can he? He just cannot get a fight. And then um, Charlo, he don't want to fight Andrade. Like, that's a nice unification there. The two American dudes, they don't want to fight each other. Moon guy there, he, he's floating about. So I just feel that... The middle way, who's the other? Ch I've, I've named all the champions, haven't I? Yeah, and then you've got Chris Morata. Yeah, you've named them. Morata, yeah. yeah. You've, you've got Chris Eubank floating around. He's going to fight Leo Swift. But I feel like they just need to start fighting each other. Like Triple G needs to be stripped of that belt if he's not going to fight, or he needs to fight Charlo Andre. I don't want to see them sort out that um, that division, really, because it's a good division. And then, as you say, the super middleweights now, Canelo's gone up. He's going to fight Makabu, but I don't think there's no way he's going to stay at cruiserweight. So then is he going to drop down to 175? If he does, that's great because it's a good it's a good division, but it'd be nice to see Better Biev, Bivol, is Canelo going to get in there? Can they all like fight each other? That could be a good um, 2022 for that division. 
He's had an unsettling lastly, year, isn't it? Sorry, Fred, let me get this out. Lastly, the other light heavyweights that we have over here, you know, Bawatsi, like whatever, Dan Aziz, Anthony Yard, uh, Craig Richards, Callum Johnson's going to fight Joe Swift, fight each other. Like, Ricky Hatton built, you know, he built a lot of his fan base off of, like, domestic fights. So just go in there and fight each other. Like, I feel like the promoters need to put the money on the table for these guys. And if they can't get a shot at the title, because maybe, I don't know, they're positioning themselves for Canelo, I'd love to see all the light heavyweight fighters just fight each other. That's a very good point about kind of Ricky Hatton gaining fans of always kind of domestic fights. It's quite smart. I know it's going to be strategic as well, but then if, again, if you're fighting... One but fighter or use uh, say Lyndon Arthur when he beat Anthony Yard the first time round he gained so many supporters so many fans from that like you can see his social media following I know not all people on social media are fans a lot of them will be haters but I know he, his social media following built massively everyone started trying to talking about him he's up there in the mix as well he's now a kind of free agent because I think he's not ever Queensbury or Frank Warren anymore but who do you think the best is out of kind of all the British light heavyweights we'll start with you Kaya Kaya ah. Uh. <laughs> the best for me is it's tough, man. The best two for me is Anthony Yard and Boatsy, and I think they will fight each other potentially at the end of the year. I know Boatsy's chasing Bivol, and Yard's probably going to get the winner of Callum Johnson, Joe Smith, who they fight next week. But we fight next week. But I think you could get Yard Boatsy this year. I think this is the year, as John said. I think Dan Aziz as well. You got to stick him in there as well after his performance against Jose Burton. I think this is the year where we're going to see these guys fight each other. We just need Callum Johnson. If he can just win that belt and bring it back to the UK, mm, mm. you know, then there's a world title. And I think everyone's going to be scrambling for that. But I'd like to see Boatsy get, the, the, you know, fell through the Vlasov fight, get that Vlasov fight, beat, beat Vlasov because I think he beats him. And then I think yeah. you're going to see Boatsy versus Bivol. And I think Boatsy yeah. beats Bivol. And then you're going to have some monsters. And I think this is all going to happen this year. Hopefully, hopefully it does. We can get a lot of... Make a lot of videos off the back of it. <laughs> are you yeah. guys going to be going? Are you guys going to be going to any of these fights as media, as press, anything like that, or just a normal fans? John? Yeah, do you know what? We're just, at the moment, we're just doing this little channel. I was saying earlier, it's like therapy doing it. Like we just did a live and we had, we had a few people come on and a chat. So I don't know. We don't know what way we're going to go with this, really. At the minute, we're sort of having fun. It's building quite nicely. We're getting a few subscribers and uh, we'll see. Like we've been, Tinkering around doing a few interviews, like maybe doing a few interviews, maybe separately going off and doing a few interviews, but we don't, we just want to be real and just talk truth about boxing. So sometimes I think if you do interviews, you sort of got to sit on the fence maybe where like our strap line with our channels, we don't get personal with fighters because you know, they're the warriors. Do you know what I mean? They're getting in there for our entertainment. So we don't get personal, but at the same time, we speak the truth. We drop some truth bombs. You know what I mean? Like as I'm saying about Fury and, um, Dillian White. If I thought I had a, an interview with uh, Tyson Fury, I might not say that, you know? So I don't know what way we're going to go with it, really. But at the minute, we're having fun. You say you're doing live yeah, streams. Mate. What about doing live watch alongs where you're watching the fight and you're also live streaming your reactions? Because those do quite good reviews. I've seen Adi, he's, he's kind of mastered it as well. Do you think you'll be doing any of that, Kaya? Yeah. You, do you know what? We've tinkered with it. We've, we've toyed with the idea of doing it. I think it'll be perfect. I don't know why, got... why you guys don't do it. I think it'll be really good for you guys. I know, I know. I think we'll have a right laugh as well. But do you know what it is? Is we've got such busy lives with kids and stuff. Is that's our little enjoyment on a Saturday night? Is to sit down, watch the whole card, get a bottle of jam shed in, as we was talking about earlier on. Some you Chinese guys want that sponsor? Food. Is that what you guys keep mentioning on my channel? You, you never know. We never. Uh, know. We've got a few Australian followers. So if anyone from Jam Shed happens to hear this, then uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll do a little Thai booth, start drinking it on uh, on camera. But yeah, listen. Um, yeah, yeah, it's as simple as that, really. We, we, we're not entirely sure about the watch-alongs, but you know what? I think we'll probably do one or two this year. But I don't for know. the big we'll fights, see. maybe you should do it then. For when AJ fights or Dinny White Fury, if it, if it happens, you should do one. But, but you, we're, we're quite emotional characters, Fred. That's Sometimes good. People like that. People like people who are characters. Yeah, you're but enjoying. when you're live, you can't, you can't edit. <laughs> uh, you can't Fred, edit anything. Like That's it. We did a live about three days before Christmas, and because it was, you know, we started drinking the jam shed. We ate, I don't know why we keep mentioning it. It's such a nice drink, though, right? But we we was drinking that, and then about an hour into it, 
we started having an argument because we obviously got a bit drunk but we've known each other a uh, whole life so this is what we do you know but um yeah. so yeah i don't know we'll see we'll see maybe maybe you never know one of these uh live streams you guys do you start drinking that drink it might go off and go viral and your channel will start will start really really going up but i'm sure we'll catch up soon i'll put your channel link in the description but thanks so much for the time we'll catch up in the in two or three months